If you're a regular viewer of this show, you know that our world is full of beautiful gemstones of all different shapes, sizes, and colors. But have you ever thought about the gemstones that might exist on other planets? Scientists may not know if there is life out there, but because all the elements that make up the beautiful rocks here on Earth exist elsewhere in the great beyond, they've been able to theorize about, and in some cases observe, incredible stones that might actually form in these extreme environments. But you don't have to travel too far from our home turf to find these intergalactic stones. Just a few years back, researchers discovered an unusually large deposit of spinel on an area of the moon that we might recognize as the man on the moon's nose. Which is really upsetting because the last time that something formed on my nose, well, it definitely wasn't Spinel. Using a device called the Moon Mineralogy Mapper, or M3, scientists from NASA have made an extremely detailed map of the moon's surface and can even tell what minerals make up the crust of our closest planetary neighbor. These researchers discovered an exorbitant amount of chromite spinel, which is similar in its structural makeup to pink spinel, but it is a much darker stone made of iron, chromium, and oxygen. But don't worry, they still located a good bit of the pretty pink stuff embedded in another mineral called plagioclase. If you're worried that pink spinel is the only pretty gemstone on the moon, I have good news for you. There's olivine up there too. This translucent to transparent green stone is a popular one on the rocky planets in our solar system everywhere. On Earth, olivine in its pristine gem quality form is known as peridot. There are olivine crystals on Mars as well, and while these stones might not be as pure and beautiful as our earthly peridot, its presence on the famed red planet has helped scientists learn about the planet's ancient climate. Now, the olivine crystals in our solar system are found in the crust and just sit around. And yeah, they're pretty, but the fact that they don't fall out of the sky makes them kind of boring. But if we were to travel to one of the stars in the constellation Orion, this wouldn't be an issue. Humans have captured images of the kryptonite colored stone falling to the gaseous surface of the infant star. Because this is happening so far away, 1,350 light years away to be exact, these researchers cannot tell us exactly how the environment around this young star is producing these green crystals. But because they know how the stones are formed here on Earth, they can assume that they are cooked up near the surface of the developing star, carried up into the surrounding cosmic cloud where it is much cooler than raining back down in a way that would make Maleficent weak at the knees. Well, well. Besides just being insanely cool, this discovery helps these researchers explain how parts of our solar system came to be. Scientists have known for a while that olivine is present on comets, but have never been sure why it was there in the first place. Observing this green crystalline rain on this distant youthly star shows these nerds how these comets may have picked up these little boogers. Yeah, sure. All these relatively small extraterrestrial rocks may be cool, but what if I told you there's a planet out there that's encased in diamond? Well, maybe. Scientists theorize that the majority of this carbon-based planet is covered in graphite and diamond, and a third of the planet's mass, which equates to three times the mass of Earth, is entirely made up of diamond. That fact by itself is pretty amazing, but this isn't the first time us Earth dwellers have discovered a diamond planet. However, it is the first time we found one orbiting a sun. Now, before you pack your bags to move to this diamond planet, just know that the surface of this planet is approaching 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and it orbits around its host star so quickly, its year is only 18 Earth hours long as if the fact that it's 41 light years away wasn't enough of a deterrent. Regardless, it's too bad this discovery wasn't made when F. Scott Fitzgerald was around. If he knew about a diamond planet twice the size of Earth and nearly nine times denser, a diamond as big as the Ritz would seem like small potatoes. Are you from another planet? Let us know in the comments, but be warned. This channel is being monitored by the folks at NASA, so they may reply at you with some follow-up questions. And while you're down there, don't forget to like and subscribe. And for more information on the topics we discussed today, check out the links below. Thank you for watching.